Hi, thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Jason Zielinski. Texas has reached more than 10,000 deaths due to COVID-19. The city of Austin and Travis County have extended the stay home, mask, and be safe order through December 15th. Remember to continue wearing your face covering, social distance, and stay home when possible. We begin with Mayor Adler addressing the community last week, clarifying some confusion on the changes council made to the police budget, where the money will be going, and how it will be used. We cut $20 million. It's about 4% out of the police budget. About the same, I understand that, that the governor requested be cut from the DPS budget last session. That $20 million was to have more money to spend to help people out of camps and tents and into homes. Our police shouldn't be spending so much of their time being social workers. How did we pay for it? That $20 million? We cut about four or 5% of the police budget, only going after unfilled positions. There was a haircut on overtime and we delayed three academy classes. It's important to note that we did not lay off any officers. There was no detrimental impact on emergency response. We did not cut $150 million of police functions. Three buckets, the $20 million bucket I just talked about, a second bucket with $80 million. It was to move certain functions to civilian control and a more independent status. No function was ended. No function was reduced. The third bucket was $50 million. These were not cuts. These were not things removed from the police department. In fact, there was no decision made as to if, whether or not these functions should be changed. But we have started the work already taking a look at those functions. Does it need to be a sworn officer with a gun who's taking noise and sound measurements downtown outside of clubs. And to my community, I say, your safety is our highest priority. And your, in that sentence, means everybody in this city, those that have historically felt safe and those that have not. 20 candidates signed up to have their names on the November ballot for a seat on Austin City Council. On November 3rd, Austin voters will elect council members in five council districts, two, four, six, seven, and 10. We have an envelope for each district with the candidates' names. Last week, the city clerk's office conducted a virtual drawing to determine the ballot order in each race. Beginning in September, the City of Austin Ethics Review Commission and the League of Women Voters will host live virtual City Council candidate forums for the five council districts. District 2 will be Wednesday, September 16th. District 4 will be Wednesday, September 23rd. District 6 will be Wednesday, September 30th. District 7 will be Wednesday, October 7th. And District 10 will be Tuesday, September 29th. In the event of a runoff, the forum will be on Monday, November 30th. All forums will air live through ATXN on cable TV channel 6, UVerse channel 99, ATXN.TV live streamed in English and Spanish, and you can listen live on radio on KAZI FM 88.7. All virtual events will start at 6 p.m. Interested in submitting questions for the candidate forums? Email them to forum at lwvaustin.org or call 512-451-6710. For more information on the upcoming candidate forums, visit austintexas.gov slash candidate forums. Remember, the last day to register to vote is October 5th, and early voting begins October 13th. The City of Austin launched a new program this month called Violet Keep Safe Storage to ensure those experiencing homelessness have a safe place to keep their valuables. This is the first program of its kind in the area. Yeah. It's a citywide effort. Yeah. We're excited about it. But that's okay with me too. They do. Waiting to be used. Yes, they are. Yes. And they're going to be used quite well. I have a total of maybe about a thousand bins. Thinking about putting a picture 
of the client. We're here at the new storage facility for the homeless. It's called the Austin Keep Safe Storage. They can have bedrolls, clothes, a bunch of other stuff in here. To make sure that their valuables are in a secure location and that they have confidence that they're not going to disappear. The plan is to grow? We have about 80, 85 bins now. Okay. And also establish more sites across the city. I know. <laughs> Got here in 2007. But I didn't came homeless until 2012. For me, the way I became homeless was economic, a paycheck. I lost a job, couldn't pay the call, no, couldn't pay the... There's a lot of us out there like that. All we need is need a little help. This is important for anyone who's going to a job every day, who's going to a job interview, may not want to show up with a shopping cart, right? Or who may not want to show up with uh, a, a rucksack. You could wake up in the morning after sleeping under a bridge and find all of your things gone. Um, you could go out looking for food and come back and find your things gone. It's a basic job. and It's a, it's a good income job for the city of Austin. Now I work five days a week, uh, Monday to Friday. But to have someone here who can share with us what makes a difference in their lives as we build this program has been invaluable. That gave me goosebumps right now. You know, just helping people, that's all we need to do. We want to continue to hire homeless people to, to staff these uh, sites, and we want to continue to do what we can to make a difference in their lives day to day. They got me from the, the, from the streets, now look where I'm at. It's an insurance policy that I'm making my, for myself so I don't have to come back to homelessness. The storage program was developed in partnership with the Austin Homeless Advisory Council and the Office of Design and Delivery. Now, Mr. Harrell was part of that development team before joining the Austin Resource Recovery staff this summer. Access to the program is available through referral by homeless providers. Austin Travis County EMS is doing even more to reach our vulnerable populations when they need health care the most. Complementing the EMS Community Health Paramedic Program, Travis Baker is a paramedic practitioner, providing emergency services for up to 120 patients per month, about a third of which are people experiencing homelessness. Chip Chen, can I get a community health assistant, pack saddle and then white, please? While many of his patients have less serious needs, some have required and received urgent, life-saving care. Baker meets and treats patients on site with wounds, abscesses, skin infections, asthma, and exacerbations of other existing conditions. He can also provide medication refills and treating minor injuries such as cuts or sprains. Baker and the community health paramedics have been able to deliver care rapidly and efficiently while helping save many from making unnecessary and costly trips to hospital emergency rooms. Their work has also helped free up ambulances to focus on emergency calls. Baker's position is the first of its kind in Texas, and with the cooperation of our EMS community health paramedic team, remains focused on ending homelessness in Austin. That's it for this week's City View. Thanks for watching, Austin. Be sure to catch up on all the latest information on our ATXN.TV, our social media channels, and our dedicated webpage, austintexas.gov slash COVID-19. Stay well, Austin.